Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, we're gonna do something a little different than my normal, uh, trading cards or card game unboxing or component showing. We're gonna get a new segment called The Toy Box. This is basically where I'm gonna go through a bunch of old toys I have. Just gonna show them off, talk about some of them. Um, we'll just see how it goes. Um, as you can see up here, I have, start off, we have a Juggernaut from the X-Men. This is actually a transforming one. Pops open. I don't remember how he does it, but he turns into a tank. Um, his arms all flip open. Uh, it's kind of neat. It was a neat, interesting toy line. It was Juggernaut into a tank. Wolverine became a wolf. Um, Morph became a uh, missile. Might have been one other person. And then they did ones for Spider-Man. Um, has any famous Punisher. Yeah, people probably seen pictures online. Because he turns into like a gun. But if you change him wrong, he gets a very phallic missile. Um, and I have Maestro. Um, Future Hulk. After got bombed with gamma radiation, destroyed all the heroes. Um, I do have the accessories for a lot of these somewhere. They're buried probably in bottom one of the other bins. So I'm not going to sit here and dig out all the accessories for each and every character. Um, I could have. I just thought it would be more fun just to, hey, pull out figures and just see what we got. So here we go. We have another Hulk. But this is the She-Hulk. Um, these are back when figures didn't have, you know, hundreds of points of articulation. Articulation being every moving point. Um, you get the new figures that are in stores now, like the new Marvel figures, the wedgings and stuff. Their shoulders, elbows, wrists, hands turn, fingers turn, ankles turn. You know, back when I was growing up, we had, were, you know, the leg hinges, which were always angled for women, straight for men. You know, then you had elbows. You got lucky, started getting some of these guys that went up and down. Wasn't always the case. Um, some of them didn't even have turning heads. It's too much hair. Um, but yeah, no, we still have fun playing with these as kids. You know. There was She-Hulk. Who we got next? Alright, well, speaking of articulation, we got a superposable Spider-Man. This is probably more current to what more figures are. Hips, waist, it goes kind of around. Turns at the waist. Even he's got a little torso bend. Arms go, elbows, wrist goes up and down. His uh, ankles even move. So you can pose him and be like, I'm Spider-Man. Look at me. I know that's not what Spider-Man <laughs> sounds like. Um, yeah, so that's kind of cool. This is a really super poseable spider -Man. You can see there's like wear damage on these. I played with these toys a crap ton as a kid. So, like, the fact is I have so many that aren't just broken is a huge surprise. Oh, we're going to step away from Marvel for a moment. We have Commando Spawn. Um, if you're familiar with any of the, like, all the current new toy lines, you know, they try and release, like, oh, here's five of these characters. Here's five cool characters. You can build up and make this really neat big character. Back in the day, it was whoever, like, the title and most popular character was. There's always one of them in every line. So every Spider-Man toy had a different Spider-Man. Every X-Men pretty much had a different Wolverine. Um, Spawn was no different. So every time they came out with a new line of toys, which is usually five or six toys, they had to come up with a different spawn. So they're like, oh, this is Commando Spawn. Who has a uh, pouch down here for a knife. And he's got, you know, his... Whatever this is on his shoulder. Like a headset. Like a gun holster. Which actually looks like it probably had a gun at some point. An arm watch bang. Like, why would Spawn with all this mystical power need all these gadgets? Why would he have the Spawn logo on his chest? Um, who knows? Because to sell more action figures um, that gullible children would buy, which, proving their case. Speaking of a bazillion characters, Cable. 
uh, back in the 90s was super popular. So where you had a ton of Wolverines, also had a ton of cables. This was Arctic cable, which is why he's all in white. Um, again, we didn't have a ton of posability, but that was fine. You also got a lot more accessories than you get now. Um, I think the toys are a little bit more durable. Like, I could beat this guy around, and he's still going to, like, last. I think some of the new toys, because of all their different points, you can't move them or bang them around as much. Like, we would throw toys across the room. We'd be like, I am Hulk, or I throw him, and you could do that. You can't do that because new ones, because you're not going to throw a $15, $20 toy across the room. You're not going to give it to your kid, you know, your five, six-year-old, and be like, here, play with this $20, $20 super posable you know, Spider-Man toy, and then he snaps an arm off because he's playing with it. Um, back when I bought toys, they were $5 a piece. So it's like, I could buy three of them for the cost of a take, buy one. You know. <clears throat> Moving along. Oh, here's our first Wolverine. We have, I don't even know, uh, Tribal Wolverine, maybe? But he's, other thing that toys back in my day had, had action features. Rawr, he could, her bub, uh, slice and dice you. Um, this is basically another thing they did a lot of were reprints. So this is based, if I'm correct, this is a reprint of a Spain costume, which is the, it's like an orange costume he got from when he was with the Shi'ar in space. So basically they did was they kept all the bones and stuff that were on the accentuated but then they repainted him completely white, or not white. He's a white character. Um, they painted him, you know, tan color, skin color, and then they just painted the tribal eyes. But it's still neat, because it is a repaint, but if you stood him next to the other one, he would look different enough. Alright, so now we got one of the old 90s animated Cyclopses. And then you still got wear and tear on here. I, a Cyclops is one of my favorite characters back in the day. Um, he's got a little backpack here. You could put him on. He also has a button here. Again, that action features. I don't know if it works. Nope. His eyes are supposed to light up. It's supposed to simulate his optic blast. That's one thing they could do with these toys is because they didn't have so many other features. They could put things like that in there. You have a backpack with a little, like, like a headband on there. You could press that, too, to sh make him shoot off his beam. She'd be like, ooh, pew, pew. And then it dies, and you still just do what I did. You go, pew, pew. Because who cares? You know. <clears throat> All right. Another non-Marvel character. I collected pretty much any and everything when I was a kid. Um... I watch, I'm a fan of everything even now. I, this is from Wildcats, this is Warblade. Um, <clears throat> I used to watch the cartoon all the time. Um, I've been collecting the comic books more recently. Um, this is one of the ones that has a super weird pose because he starts crouched. His knees are already bent, so there's only so many poses you can really put him. So it's not, it's like, again, you're just gonna like display him like, oh, that looks cool. Because you don't have to worry about falling over because his, his uh, legs are already positioned that way. But, like, you're trying to have him, like, stand with other people and stuff. Nope, I guess he's always just crouched. Um, with just shiny silver was really cool. Um, another feature he had is his arms all popped off. He had different arm attachments. He could have, like, an axe. Um, I think he had some regular hands. He's supposed to have a green ponytail. Who knows where that went? Um, it's probably getting in the bottom of one of the boxes with all the other accessories. Um, and boy, did some of these toys have weird-ass accessories. Um, yeah, so there's Warblade. Here's a really odd one. We have an Ultimate Warrior. Uh, I know they still, they still make wrestling figures. That's, you know, true. But now they look more like regular action figures. You could take the current wrestling figure and put it next to, like, one of the Marvel figures. Although they would be this different size. Because all different toy lines make different size figures. At least they'd be more in proportion. But if I put this guy next to even this old Wolverine here. Looks super different. Put him next to, like, a more current Hulk. You know. Like, versus the Wolverine. Completely different. 
But these rest cards were cool because you had a little ring, you play them around. And he had the, uh, this weird neck feature, but he had a dump feature, so you push him down and then let him go. And that's back here. And you're supposed to, like, launch, like, except I can't get him to do it. I'm terrible at this. And he hops, and he's supposed to be, Err, I'm ultimate warrior! And then he hops at you. So, like, you know, little gimmicky things, but hey, when I was a kid, we were cool with that. But, hey, also, we didn't have the internet 24-7 either, so. Alright. This is Mongo from Generation X. Um, Megamorph ability, you can... Uh, touch something, absorb it, basically like uh, Absorbing Man, except to an extent better because he could literally become it. More like Grunge from Generation uh, Gen 13. So he's part of his accessories that I just had attached to him. You can see like, whoop, you can see part of his like fingers coming wood. And this is like, this is the side of like, oh, now he's complete wood arm. And then this side, he has some wood on there too, and rocks, and like, nope, no, he has a rock arm. Um, it was a very weird character arc for him, uh, because he was originally cloned, and then, like, came back and was evil, or wasn't he, and it was weird. Um, but that's my go. Oh, oh. Alright, another X-Men character. Here's a baddie. This is Seneca. He was a uh, acolyte of Magneto, and he had a giant electric whip, and I may have broke his arm. He's supposed to have an arm swinging action. I think he lifted it up. It's supposed to uh, swing down. But years of playing with toys has apparently broke his arm. I mean, here, maybe you can hear it clicking. But he has a little switch back here, so he should do like a whipping action. Dash is one of them weird characters because he doesn't have a head to turn, but they kind of made up for it with a waist. Um, he's part of Magneto's Acolytes. You know, they did make a lot of odd characters back in the day, but again, when you were making like a new toy line every six months and you had to come up with five new characters and you couldn't just have five Wolverines every time, I'm sure they probably tried at one point. Um, you came up with other characters. You picked everyone from the books. People would be like, is that guy even around him? No, probably not. Um, speaking of odd ones, we have this wasp from a very short-lived series where she actually became a living wasp. She would have wings that attached back here. This is uh, also part of a series where, um... Her wasp wings came with other little pieces and made a little wasp figurine that could fly around with her. Uh, I don't see it sitting here on the top of the box, so it's probably buried with the accessories somewhere. So, maybe we'll drag it when we get to that point. One of these videos, we'll drag that back out. But yeah, if you looked at this, you'd be like, ooh, this is some weird... Even if she had her wings, it'd be bugly, but you wouldn't think of this as Janet Van Dye Wasp. Because it was like a 2000-something storyline. I don't think it lasted more than a couple of months, and then she reverted back. Um, it was right before, I believe, the Onslaught arc and the Heroes Reborn. So I think they kind of used that as a reason to change her back. So there's Wasp. Alright, we have Spider Copter Spidey Man. It's kind of a neat suit for Spider Man. Um, he's got a bunch of flexibilities. He's, as the figures went on over the years, they got more. Um, he's actually has a backpack attachment. That I don't, again, don't have out. Um, with a big giant web zipline copter, you put it up on, like, attach it from one part of the room to the other, and he would go zip around. It was neat, but again, it's like throwing things as, as a kid. Trying to store something with a bunch of wires and cords. I guess it was just it wasn't wires. It was uh, like string. They get tangled up. You throw them in your toy box. They get tangled. It gets wrecked. And then you're like, hey, now I just got this weird looking Spider-Man. And he's like, look at my look at my cool costume. All right, uh, webcopter Spider-Man. 
All right, well, that's all I have for uh, the Toy Box video one. I'm going to just do a ton of these. Um, I might keep them kind of short. Um, so that was part one. See you guys later.